Thanks again for joining us on Flipside. It's been an amazing day so far. Good afternoon. My name is Daisy Leo Asikidi, and today we'll be talking about the lockdown, and we're focusing more on our children. It's no news that coronavirus has been in our cities in Nigeria, and as such, government has deemed it fit to put a partial closure to some businesses, and parents have been told to stay at home and except it's an emergency and there's also a curfew in Benin City at eight o'clock no movement it used to be seven before it was relaxed to about eight mm. so we know that we're all praying coronavirus is going to eventually leave we we'll find a cure everyone will be safe but before then there are other kinds of safety measures you all need to apply especially if you have children your biological children or your wards um, we're talking about keeping kids safe during this lockdown. School used to be one of the major places where our kids find safety. Now, you go to work at 8 o'clock or before 8, the kids are already in school. Sometimes they close at 2, you pay for extracurricular activities that's maybe ballet classes, karate classes, um, soccer classes, whatever, to keep them to maybe 4 when you close from work extra lessons, own lessons, and all sorts of things we do to keep them occupied. Now, these are not existing anymore because of the lockdown. But how then do you keep your kids safe? As much as government said we all should stay at home, we will be lying to ourselves if we say we don't know that parents are still going about their businesses. People are still, in fact, more people are now selling food. Those who sell clothes before are selling food. And then we have those who open their shops and they could at least stay nearby. When you pass by, they ask you, Madam, wait till you won't buy. They say, I want electronics. They go open their shops and they sell to you. So people are still doing their businesses and the children are in, at home without the care of the teachers. How do you keep your children safe from home accidents, from sexual predators, especially from pedophiles? We'll go on a short break. When we return from that break, you'll meet my guest, who is a child rights activist, who also is a medical doctor. You've met him severally on the show. But let's quickly take this break. When we return, we'll get talking. I stay glued all day, listening to the independent radio. That's the Heartbeat Station. No, no, no need to mention. Brand new, brand new from the package to the finest news. Information, education, entertainment, satisfaction. In the program is flip side. We're talking about keeping kids safe during the lockdown and Daisy Liu Asikidi. And my guest today is Dr. Bright Onovo Kuko. Thank you for being on the show today with me. Again. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a delight to have you here. Good afternoon. Okay, you. now let's focus on the main one, sexual predators. Now, um, most of these parents, especially those who are selling in the market to sell food stuff, let's assume everyone is now selling food stuff, um, they leave their homes and they, they leave their kids in the care of maybe uncles, aunties, neighbors, <coughs> teenagers who they feel are mature enough to care for their children. How, how safe is this practice now that we don't have school teachers to cover up this gap? Well, it's, uh, it's actually uh, challenging. Because uh, even when the schools were on, it was also a challenge, let alone now that the parents may leave and come back uh, later in the day. And you know, the perpetrators of, of this act, they don't just start overnight, mm -hmm. you know. They are actually like predators who watch their prey, calculate their prey, and when it is time, they strike. So they may have seen the pattern of the uh, parents over this uh, period and they watch. And because of that, they can actually have opportunity to um, have their way. And we're sure these challenges are, are there. But again, the parents, they still have a very big role to play in this um, issue because 
talking about leaving the child for maybe a neighbor, mm -hmm. an older sibling, or even the, the father, or mm -hmm. even the mother, you know. Mm -hmm. Looking at uh, sexual abuse, it cut across. It may be perpetrated by a neighbor, by an uncle, by a cousin, yeah. even a brother, even uh, the father, uh, the, father yes. the mother, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, they are all uh, they are all there, but first there are signs that could come up. So it is for the children to understand some of those um, some of those things, and of course the need for them to cry out, the need for them to speak out, you know, because these predators they don't just do it, except those who go for probably outright uh, rape or defilement, and they just grab. But for some of these uh, uncles and uh, neighbors, they come subtly. They come in a manner that the child may not be suspecting. So it is not left for you to make the child understand some certain things that could uh, come up, and based on that, they will open up. If, for example, uh, you go to the market in the morning, and you come back in the evening, and your child is trying to tell you this is what and what uh, happened. Try to listen to the child. Try to understand what the child is talking about. And also want to investigate or check it out. Or give the child the necessary advice or something that could um, guide because the child needs to feed. And what you are going to get outside is to cater for the, for the family. So you have to also find a way to know what happened while I was away. Was this child at any risk or was anything coming up? The child should be able to be open. And it's, it's a pity that this is the time that parents who are not friendly to their uh, children, who are not open to their children, could actually put them at a bigger risk. Because they may not see anything different. If I tell mommy, if I tell daddy, they may not want to uh, listen. So if uh, eventually you are not close to your child before, this is the time for you to get close to your child, make your child to uh, speak out if there is anything that is coming up. Mm. That is for those who are even getting out of the house. You understand? But for some who are even in the house, the children also are even at risk. Because some parents may not even, your child is in the room, what is the child doing? Are you getting it? Yeah. The child is in the room, what is the child doing? You could be probably in a flat or thereabouts, you know, the child, they are in the room, what are they doing? So it's not only probably where you go out of the house that you will be thinking, but while you are there inside the house, while they are in the room, from time to time, you must go and check what they are doing. You must be sure of what they are doing. So it's not only probably those who are going out, even those who are within, you may just be busy doing something somewhere. Where the children are doing their own, uh, their own thing. Okay. At what age should we start teaching our children sex education? Because for a child to even understand that he or she is being um, sexually abused or molested, the child must understand what it's about. So, but from what age should we start teaching children about sex education? Well, as early as possible. As soon as the child is able to understand some little things, some could take maybe from three years. Some children of two years, they can accurately mention some uh, uh, things. They can tell you maybe the basic part of your uh, body. All you need to do is let them know probably, okay, uh, my breasts, my buttocks, my. Uh, make them know that if anybody should touch them, it's not for anybody. Why? Because we are going to be baiting them or something. Fine. But let them know that anybody that touches those areas, they should let you know. So if you are a mother and your child comes and tells you, Uncle Soso and So, touch me here. If Uncle Soso and So is not the one probably taking, uh, baiting the child or something, or probably the child is not even baiting, the, the guy is not the one baiting him or she's not the one baiting him, what? Will you? Uh, that is, the church will be able to come and tell you this is what and what is happening. Mommy, this person touched me here. This person touched me here. It gives a sign that oh, this thing is uh, going on. 
So at that age, you should be able to tell the child, don't touch you here, don't touch you. If anybody touch you here, let me know. So as the child is growing, you begin to expose the child to other, um, to other things. And it's not like my boy was coming up at you. This is penis. Mm. You understand? So he will tell you, you know, he, he, he knows the name. Or like when you try to, you, you know, no guidance, no uh, information, there is nothing. You just allow the child to be going on like that. No. At the age the child is growing, you just be equipping the child with the right information. And sometimes they may come back and ask you questions. They may come back and ask you questions. You know, so those are some of the things that for us we must uh, uh, do. You understand? Know, educating the child, informing the child, discussing with the child, letting the child know. Now, you mentioned something about children having their backs. That was a discussion we had some time on the program Ladies Night on Radio. And we asked at what age should mommy stop, ba stop baiting the little boys and daddy stop baiting the little girls, uncle, cousin, nieces, and all those who stay with you of the opposite sex. What age should they stop baiting? Because I think when um, brother, when we, this is our brother thing, is still baiting the girl at a certain age, she might not really know the difference if in the process of the bath. Is using the opportunity to touch her sensitive part and say I'm washing it. So at what age should we call it and say no, no more? If you're a girl, a girl will beat you. If you're a boy, daddy will beat you. Well, uh, if you look at development, they varies. Yes, they varies. For you as uh, a mother, or rather a parent who actually is concerned about your uh, child. You watch the child as the child is growing. I cannot tell you, oh, at age 10, at age 12, at age this. You understand? If possible, you do it yourself. And if they get to a particular age, probably you can start supervising them. When your child is 8, 9, 10, you can supervise. And be sure that they can actually uh, do it themselves. And at some certain time, Fine, they, they could be doing it themselves, but you can come once in a while and do if you want to probably a thorough one or demonstrate uh, anything. You cannot say, uh, because you could see a child now, the child is 10 years. The child may be more responsive in terms of probably with those touch and all those things compared to a child who is 15 years. So you may not necessarily use age to do it, but it's just for you to take all necessary precautions. If it's okay, at uh, 10 years, they stop. So people actually perpetuate more of those at even to a child who is 30 years old. Mm -hmm. so, so for you as a parent, it is your responsibility to do that. It's not everything you need to just subject to the next, uh, to the next person. And even talking about uh, the male, beating the male, the female beating the female, even in, the, in the world that we are in today, it doesn't really also count. Because some females also have a way of probably getting some form of uh, uh, stimulation or affection from another, to the, from another female. So if you as a parent actually want to do what you need to do, you stand your ground. So the best bet is bet the child. When it gets to a particular age, let the child be supervised to be sure that the child can bet it so herself. Okay. Um. For parents who are really busy now and they are not used to having conversations with their children, some do talk, but maybe by the time they get home, they're tired. Thanks that, um, to the government for making market shuts down way earlier than normal, but we still see that even after they shut down the market, they take their wares Outside to another market, location yes. and continue selling. So how do they now observe something is wrong with their child so they can help? For me, we just need to balance up whatever thing we are doing. We just need to, because this period now, to some persons, has a very big advantage. Why? Because they have, has, they have the desire, they actually want to stay with their children, they want to talk to their children, but because of the demand of their job or their business, they are taken away. But now that the time they have to spend their, in their workplace has been uh, limited, 
it means they may have more uh, time with their own uh, with their own children. You understand? So for those, this is an opportunity for you to actually get to know your child, let your child understand you, discuss with you. Then for those who are in the market, probably before now your child is at home or is in school, when your child is coming back from school, that is when you are coming back from the market. Now that the routine has changed, the child is at home. You don't know what's happening to the child. If market closes by 3 p.m., start going home. Because at the end of the day, the, the problem is that what people don't realize is that at the end of the day, the money you are trying to get today, you will spend it tomorrow to start solving pro, uh, either solving some problem or you start regretting uh, about it. So if you your, the market has closed, what are you doing? Rush back home. Every potential you have now, you should get back home and check on the children. Okay. All right. Um, we still have a question on and home accidents because while they're home now, children can be very restless. My God, you need to meet my nieces and my nephews. They can be very restless and the chances of getting hurt will also increase since they have less activities keeping them occupied. But let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we would ask this question on households to keep them safe from home accidents. All right, so um, it's the flip side. We have a couple of minutes before we're out of the space. Not so much, so let's deal with the home accidents. How can we also ensure that the accidents are reduced? Because I don't think any mother wants to be trying to sell okra and next thing get a call that your son just fell from true, you don't break in leg and all that stuff. So what can we do to also reduce the risks of accidents? Well, a whole lot of caution. A whole lot of uh, cautioning, getting the child to know what and uh, what is dangerous, what could be harmful, and all those um, all those things. And of course, well, some guidance. Uh, but then, like we're talking about, some people that you may put them under their care, may be some perpetrator, but we will weigh the risk mm. to look at it. And of course, if they are the ones that probably going to lock them indoor, ensure you they have key that they can use to open the door or the gate in case of emergency. Don't yeah. lock them inside and go with the, the uh, go with the key. The way you have little, little, probably maybe toddlers and other things, remove chemicals. Especially this time around that uh, we're talking about sanitizing mm -hmm. and all those uh, uh, different kind of uh, chemicals people uh, get access to. So you take them off. If there are things that you can lock up, lock them up. If probably there is a place where they will get to lock it up if maybe uh, like your uh, your kitchen some people may be using a uh, gas to uh, cook. cook the child may come up to say oh i want to warm the food it goes on to put on the gas and before you know it some other things uh, uh, come up what you just need to look around what are the possible things that could harm this uh, child just take them uh, take them off and this is the time you can also make them understand the consequence of some of the things that they will do because if children understand the consequence of their action it also guide them not to take those uh, actions. actions so you make them understand this is the consequence of if you do this this is the consequence of it. if you do this it will go a long way to guide you must be vigilant don't assume anything if you feel anything could be harmful to your child just take them off okay um we're saying something off camera about the online classes and a lot of private schools are doing that. For government schools, I don't think that's going to work because we have more parents who do not have Android devices and computers or access to the internet or extra change to buy data. But for the private schools, it's working for them, online classes. Now, parents are leaving their phones and their devices with the kids so they could watch videos sent by their school heads and also watch kids um, educational videos on YouTube. How safe is all of this in the long run? Well, uh, it has benefits you know, because it will make the child learn. Mm. That is the benefit. But on the other way around, if there is no guidance, if there is no guidance, the child could go haywire. 
the child could go uh, off. Because this is the time that, oh, probably the child have a tablet, maybe an iPad. Mm. He goes into the room from time to time. Like I said, go and check what the child is doing. doing. Some may be smart. Some may not be smart enough. The smart ones may clear off browsing history. The ones that are not smart enough may still leave it there. You can check the browsing history and see to the various sites that they have gone to. You can check and check the various app that they have. Because sometimes if you don't do that, they may veer off. We have a whole lot of chatting uh, sites and before you know it, they are already chatting with somebody that they don't uh, Even know. know. Again, make them understand. Like there is an adage that says um, anything that goes online is online. If your message goes online, it's online. If your pictures goes online, it's online. If your videos go online. So if you send your nude picture online, it will still be there. So parents just need to check, watch their children. Because you may just say, okay, where the child is learning. Oh, where is the child? Oh, he's in the room. Oh. Ah, what is he doing? He's doing schoolwork. He's doing schoolwork, my dear. Once in a while, go there. Check what the child is doing. Hmm. Check what the child is doing. Don't just assume and allow it, uh, allow it be. They understand because they could get exposed to certain uh, things. They could divulge information that could even put the whole family at, uh, at risk. risk and mm. so many other things. A child that is even chatting online can give the schedule of the parents to, some, to a stranger. And when the parents are not around, the person comes around. As they should also know that some of the people you are chatting with online, they may not actually be their true self. They could be coming up with a deceptive uh, 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 self to tell you, oh, I am this, I am that, I am that, I am that, or no to them, but they are dangerous. So the children need to understand this, and our parents need to watch their uh, children. Fine, I know that some parents, they have the money, but they don't have the knowledge. They can get the help of somebody to help them probably program their uh, system. Some of those systems have uh, parental uh, control, some kind of uh, privacy uh, restriction, and so many other things. Those things can be programmed so it can limit the, the child to what the child will be getting across to on uh, online. But it doesn't really stop you from time to time supervise and see what the child is uh, doing. Even before this uh, lockdown, we've gone to some schools to have maybe some kind of uh, activities with the school and we see them with their phone. If you go without them knowing, pick up the phone from them. If you look at it, what are you saying? <laughs> pornographic uh, uh, movies. So we just need to be vigilant in all ramifications. Nobody is, should be trusted. Okay. Everybody should just be on the alert to ensure that we get our best for this uh, period. And the more reason why we need to actually pay good attention at this time is that even after the long, even after the coronavirus may have gone, there are some things that will not change. Some of the way of life that has been discovered may not change. Mm -hmm. So we just need to start from now, monitoring, watching, and ensure that the child has a good practice. All right. Um, I want to say thank you for being with me on the show today and for making it an amazing time here. Parents, you need to be very, very observant at this time. Just because we're all home doesn't mean everything is well. You need to check what your kids are doing from time to time. The friends, they keep this as an opportunity for you to know them, engage them in conversation so you know how they think and their opinions on certain issues. You can bring up a topic and say, what do you think? And also understand how they think. And I want every parent out there to understand that you don't just tell teenagers, especially teenagers, do not do without giving reasons why they shouldn't do, very convincing reasons why they shouldn't do. In fact, telling them not to do is the more reason why they would do when your reasons are not making sense to them. So let's all do all we can to keep our kids safe. Coronavirus will finish real soon. And these children will still want them with us strong and for a better tomorrow for Nigeria in general and the world at large. Be observant. Don't leave your children to just anybody 
in your neighborhood because the person goes to your church or the person speaks your language or the person is related to you. Check your kids when you're beating them. Check their vital parts to be sure nothing has entered. All right? Well, we will all get out of this lockdown better and stronger. That's my personal belief. I'm Daisy Liu Asikidi. Thanks for watching. See you next week.